you can handle this. I don't want to handle things. I want to just do and be. The reason why I talk so much about relationship is because if I can help you avoid the wrong guy. $200 dates are mandatory, okay? It's really the bare minimum. Tell us, if you can afford to spend over $200 on a date, then you need to be clocked in. But as well, a date you don't have to spend money. I love to go for drives and just talk and spend time with my partner. American guys are just more, like, romantic. Hey guys, welcome back to Mortal Life. Before I get into this video, I ask that you like, comment, subscribe. Also, smash that notification bell just to be sure you get my videos as soon as I release them. Let's get right into this. Why am I only worthy of respect if I'm strong? What if I'm a weak woman? I always thought this was a compliment because growing up, I was under the impression that being strong and independent was what was going to get me love. But it's that post that's going around that hyper independence is a response to trauma. I was deemed the good kid because I could tolerate so much neglect. Now as an adult, it just makes me sad to be perceived as strong and independent because I feel like that says to people, I'm able to endure a lot. And just because I have doesn't mean that I want to continue enduring a lot. I want to be handled with care. I want to be fragile. I want for people to love me even if they think I'm a weak person. And even at work, it's what has made my employers push me to my absolute limit because they're like, oh, you're such a hard worker. You're so strong. You can handle this. I don't want to handle things. I want to just do and be. As she said, right? Look what happened to her at work. She was pushed to her limit. And what it does is I've actually seen a study and of course it's, it's facts, right? Men can be pushed to the limits and not hold on to it, right? Women are going through such a toll at work because they're working jobs and the mental capacity, I'm not trying to say women are weak mentally. I'm saying they're, they're not as much in tune. They're not built for stress as much as men, I should say, right? And is that something that men look at women and say, oh, well, yeah, we, we, we stronger than you. No, 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 no. It's just how we were naturally built, right? Those XY chromosomes, all that stuff God put in us, he put it in us for a reason. He built men with, you know, fast twitch muscles and even men's slow twitch muscles are better. He gave men all of that and the mental capacity we have to react to certain things, to go through trauma and be calm, right? That's why... A lot of times you see a man going through the most hard time in his life and he gets through it. Why? Because he's built that way. Let me go on to the next one. The bomb with the loser will absolutely ruin your life. I've expressed this sentiment a few times on my channel. I love her video. Go watch it for the full context. But you really need to understand that while dating relationships might feel like a very discreet part of your life, your relationships actually have the potential to completely derail you in ways that you cannot even begin to imagine. So yeah, I could talk about my career as a big law attorney. I could talk about the two Ivy League degrees. I could talk about my time working in the Obama way, and I will. But the reason why I talk so much about relationship is because if I can help you avoid the wrong guy, you will flourish and grow and be fulfilled in ways that when you finally do meet the right guy, he will be a very important, very cherished part of your world but he will not become the totality of it. And that is what you want. Well, how it's meant, right? It's meant for women to be totally at ease when they're around men. Like you, I've seen it and I'm sure you guys have seen it too. Where so you see certain women and they say, oh, you know, they're in the car with their man and they drive, but they don't care to kick back. And they always say, I don't need to worry about the directions or where I'm going. Same thing with my wife, right? When I first came out into the Philippines, she's like in tune with things. I give it like a month. She was at ease because I automatically took over and took that man role, the natural, you know, I know I'm going. I'm looking at where I'm going. I'm looking at how long it's going to take to get there. I'm doing all that stuff. But she does take care of everything on vacation because, of course, I take the lead in other ways. But what she's saying I get it. She's trying to tell women to be strong. And I think women should be strong that way. 
women shouldn't choose the wrong guys. A lot of women do need to choose better. I'm happy she's holding women accountable, but still, in the place she's coming from, you know, brag. She's still trying to show and and show who she is and what she's done. And I'm so proud. And you can tell from what was this? What was there even any need to mention that, right? Just say what you're saying to help women out. No need to mention what you've done. <laughs> they can't help it, right? Guys always say we don't care about your accolades. We don't care about none of that stuff. All we care about is can we love you? Will you appreciate us? And doesn't matter what you've done, because nine times out of ten, a man makes if a man makes more than you, or if a man makes less than you, no matter what it is, a woman wants to lay her hair down and put it on on, on a man anyway. So if she gets a man, she's gonna say, I want a man to be able to take care of most of the bills, even though she has the bag. That's why men don't care. Let me go into the next one. If you go to her Instagram page and her little story highlights have her visiting every other country around the globe, every beach, every city. Keep it moving. She has more travel miles than Christopher Columbus. You think she's settling down with you? And the saddest part is they'd be the coolest ones to talk. And you know what's funny? He's kind of talking about passports, sis. So I'm going to let him finish. And this is the difference. I'm going to explain the difference too too because they're so well traveled they got stories about every place they've been to every restaurant every club every bar i will say this though stay in contact with a couple of them for some food recommendations they know the best spots you have to peep game when she's posting a picture of her food look what's on that plate you know how much that dinner costs not to mention she probably got drinks and dessert but it's not like she's paying for it as soon as i click on her page and i see the stories divided into each location good game you got it you got it because i'm looking at the dates how did you go on 16 vacations in a year? Where is home? The Vikings didn't even travel that much and they were nomads. But I don't ask questions. That's not my place. I stay in my place. The one thing I will say is this. Hey, let me know if you're ever in my city. Okay, if your world tour happens to stop by my city, hit me up. I'll show you around. Well, you know, it was wild, right? I get what he's saying. And he's totally right about that. But still, he doesn't understand digital nomads, right? And I'm gonna see. I'm gonna defend passport sis here right now. I know a lot of you are gonna say, "Wow, he's defending." I am, because they, it could be a passport sis. The reason why she's in so many cities, once you're outside of the country and you're living, you're living like not above your means. It's cheap to be outside of the country. It's expensive in the U.S., right? So give me, let me give you an example. Say I'm in the Philippines. I want to travel over to Thailand. Back and forth, it may cost me what. 30,000, which is 600 bucks. Not that bad. For me to go from Chicago and back, you know, back to New York, or let me give you an example. Um, New York to LA and then back again, that's probably about 400, right? The difference is me spending 600, I'm experiencing another country. And then once I get in Thailand, I can travel right to the next country easily for much cheaper than 30,000. Um, Malaysia, I can go right down to Singapore. I can go over to Vietnam. I can hop all over the place and even go to India if I want to. I can travel to so many different countries for a very inexpensive price. I spent 30 to get there. Then I spent maybe five, 10,000 to bounce and bounce back and forth. So she could have done that. Woman could do that. And get, that's what guys do. I, I did it myself. And I suggest anybody that wants to experience these different cultures, Definitely do that. Go to one country where it's connected to other countries and move around. You know, don't just travel outside of the country and stay still because, yeah, you feel very bored. Let me hop on to the next one. $200 dates are mandatory, okay? It's really the bare minimum. Stop letting these broke men and these pick me's that ain't been picked yet try to convince you to settle for less, okay? $200 is nothing. It's like a cocktail and an appetizer. It's really important yeah. to like go all out on the first date because you might not vibe with them the first time and then you did all that for what? For both of us, probably like around like a hundred. Okay, fellas, if you can't afford to spend over two hundred dollars on a date, then you need to be clocked in. Okay, you don't need to be dating. You need to be on a job. Okay, and ladies, please, it takes so much money and effort for us to get dolled up and go out. Ain't nobody even dressed up to go to Applebee's. Okay, keep your standards where they belong. Okay, and stop letting these losers convince. So she's telling woman, keep those standards high, and everybody already knows, single woman, keep. Other woman single. Emotional damage. It's like the, the never ending story, right? But give me one second, y'all. I gotta, I wanna show something because I have a, a slew of other ones here. So we have this woman saying $200 dinner dates is mandatory, right? Now I gotta play this woman here. 
is $200 enough for a date. So my lovely Caribbean island have another debate going on about if $200 is enough for a date. Let's make some points. There are different types of dates. There are big dates where, yes, you will have to spend more than $200 in order for you to wine and dine your girl or wine and dine your man. And as somebody said, dating is a luxury. So if you want to date, you should have the money to date. But as well, a date, you don't have to spend money. I love to go for drives and just talk and spend time with my partner. Dating is about spending time getting to know the person you're with courting them sometimes all you need to get in your head quality is better than quantity that need to be said again and again with fierce conviction it's about spending time getting to know the person you're with courting them sometimes all you need to get in your head quality is better than quantity and ladies you're spending two hundred dollars for a day for your man or they have $200 to spend on your man. Or let's take on your man on dates. I find what we want for ourselves. We should be able to return and give to our partner. Because at the end of the day, it's a relationship. It's the both of all in it. The same way he's taking you out. The same way you could take him out. And somebody also made a point. If a man views you as being worthy of spending more than $200 on you, he will spend more than $200 on you. But if you are a $200... This here says also look at the person you're dating in their circumstances. Could they afford the more than 200 day you want? No. Then why put yourself in a position where you'd be left unsatisfied and your standards are not met? That's a good point. A la gal and you are $200 la gal. And if it's not a $1,500 gal, you're not a $1,500 la gal. And you just had to get us in your head. Make yourself the $1,500 la gal. But if a man consistently spending $200 on a date or less than you, then I don't know what to tell you. Because money does not make for a good date i found out they should look at the people they're going on the dates with because trust i could yes and that's exactly why and some women know this some women do know they say you know a coffee date is best because you sit down and you talk with the person and then you work on your next date being expensive go in a park and sit down and talk with somebody and i could be the best day of my life compared to somebody who carry me to some fancy restaurant and we sit down there and stare at each other and have no kind of conversation of substance it don't make me laugh nothing like that so i would literally rather go by somebody and watch a movie where no money even had to spend than do all of that and then the date was nothing of substance it was trash the person was not in it was at the time when them was not enjoyed like money don't make for a good date some of all you just want to get fed or use the man for the food. As long as you're taking me out, it's the thought that counts. I just feel like if you're genuine and nice, we can go to McDonald's for all I care. It don't matter. So, yeah. Yeah, so true. So many guys out there have been using foodie calls. You know, I feel bad for the guys that don't realize. You know, some guys out there don't realize they're being used for foodie calls until about the fifth date in, in, in a week. And they're going, wait a minute. <laughs> I spent 150, 200. I, I look at it like this. If you're a man that doesn't mind spending the money, um, well, I, I can't tell you that. I, I can't say that because you know what's going to happen? I'll say that. And then people watch this video, say a thousand people watch it. Then 200 guys go out there and think it's okay to blow a bag when you shouldn't be doing that. Right? But this, listen to this lady here. What she's saying is so right. And that's how guys feel like I can take you out on a walk and, the, and they, they, there's no walk in the park store no more. Man, it's not happening. But guys, you see this woman in the streets. If you're a guy that doesn't want to travel to another country, you see this woman in the streets, you get her. Right. Because she's a two out of ten. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Guy? Not a two out of ten as far as looks. The two out of ten woman that will accept that. So you get a woman like that. She's a keeper. Let me hop on the next one. So these guys right here, this is this says Brazilian women love dating American men. And you know why I got so excited here? I seen I seen the cover of this. I said, these are two passport bros right here. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Oh, Brian asked us if we have better experiences dating foreigners or locals. For sure, foreigners. Dating Brazilians is much harder than dating Americans. 
Why do you say that? Because I had、um, two relationships with American guys, and comparing to Brazilian guys, American guys are just more, more like, like romantic. I love it. I love it. Naturally, nah. Na but I gotta let her finish. But they don't have the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> <laughs> no theory. Okay. No theory. I don't sound like a bad person or anything. White boys in America don't have the flavor. That was a low blow, right? But、um, hey, I get. I tell you like this, right? Some Brazilian women like black guys. There are a lot that like white guys too. So it, it's wild. Like any passport bro going out there, passport Joe, whatever you want to call yourself. Yeah, you will. You go out there, and see the, how these women are. All of them, and their smiles, and they're happy to be around these guys. And let me tell you something about the woman there, right? You see that woman? It's the same thing in the Philippines. She's pretty. She's pretty. The one at the bottom is cute. They don't look at themselves like they way up here, because there's so much competition. When you leave the states, woman looking at other woman like, I gotta treat this man right because somebody can take him away from me, right? And not they don't look at it like in a in a in a、um, not in a、uh, paranoid kind of way, but they know they know that it's not easy pickings for an American guy, right? You don't know you see a bunch of American guys, but it's not like you know American 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 like it is when you go to certain places, right? They gotta tread carefully. And women are bringing tables, and the reason why they're bringing tables and showing their true character is because they want they want to have a man love them. And the thing is, a lot of times it's not about going back to the states because if you tell a Brazilian woman, would you rather go or any woman from anywhere, would you rather leave or stay in your country? They're gonna say, I would rather stay here. With the money that you're making, we can stay here and be queens and queens. Come on now, why would a woman turn that down? I don't have to leave. I can stay in my culture. And and have all the money in the world, cause the money's five times more. Who's who's denying that? But I tell you what though, guys are definitely gonna leave and go for that and deny what's back home because they realize it's more to life than dealing with that. <laughs>